just another kill team podcast content for the new edition how we're doing jason doing great uh it looks like warriors are doing also great this edition uh, yeah. especially for the factions that we're about to highlight yeah they've gotten a big upgrade in this edition trying to make it so that there are some other reasons to take something outside of just specialists making our warriors specialists in their own right and we wanted to give out some honorable oh. mentions yeah, uh, it also just all these changes make it way more approachable to people coming over from 40k. If you built a bunch of warriors, now they're going to be valid in kill team as well. Yeah, you know, we wanted to call out some of these guys who didn't quite make it onto our top five list. You know, starting off with the novitiates, the faith points have always been a big crutch for the team. And now if you use a militant, anytime you use your one ploy for the turn, you actually get it refunded. So it's almost like you can just move something from a, a hit to a critical for free. Yeah, kind of uh, basically making them severe. Makes them pretty helpful. Um, the fact, the reason that they're an honorable honorable mention instead of one of the, the main ones there is that the specialists that you do have are pretty good, so you probably don't want to be replacing them with militants all the time. But the militants that they do have, they're pretty good, and like it's something to consider. Yeah. I think the Corsairs are kind of in the same boat. Your specialists are so good, and your specialists in this edition have gotten so much better because now you have multiple pieces that can take fights, you can take all your gunners. But, you know, the humble Corsair warrior does get to use a free CP on either Light Fingers or the ability to fall back for one AP. And because your team is more CP hungry this edition, because you're actually spending it on rerolls that come in the form of strat ploys, it might actually be good for us to maybe replace the sniper in some situations where you just want to be able to do light fingers for free. You know, get open a door, touch a mission action. You never know when that flexibility is going to be nice. Yeah. yeah. Coming in third place, we've got um, our Hernkin Jaeger. You want to walk us through it, Jason? Yeah, so I mean, this is one I, I haven't looked at it a ton, but just we flagged it as a good one. Uh, so they group activate. Is this like any any two of them can group activate? Uh, no, and when they this is do, part of the ploy for one of them gets free. Jaegers, where they can group activate. But now, because the warriors get their new ability, you know, they get a little bit more juice when they do. Yeah. Um, so what's the specific data sheet ability for the the Jaeger warriors. Now when the Hurricane Jaegers use their resource points, which is the team wide ability, instead of your APL dropping off at the end of the turn from the resource point, it stays until the beginning of the next turn, which means that you'll have three action points for control throughout the turn. And if you wanted to heal yeah, instead, like which is the other ability of the of the team, you can now heal for a flat four. So basically your eight wound operatives that generally you're going to take a couple more hits because you're using your strat ploy to take blocks just bounce back up to four health yeah pretty solid yeah definitely another uh, team felgor ravagers yeah felgor ravagers um they have i mean my biggest problem with them all along was that you've got 10 D, &D character sheets worth of complicated stuff going on um so i've always been attracted to running felgor ravagers with a bunch of warriors uh, I've, I've tried it in the past, it was fine, and now it's even better now that warriors ignore being injured, injured when they're frenzied. Yep, it means that your suicidal warrior dorks, probably not better than having a D&D's character sheet's worth of rules, are definitely a valid pick in a handful of situations, just because getting your second life hitting on threes again is pretty gross. Yeah, like it's, it's you know, it'll get you through a couple of games. It'd be good for learning the faction, but I think if you wanted to play Felgor Ravagers seriously, Warrior Spam is not necessarily the way to go. It's definitely not the way to go. Yeah, it's definitely true. And then we get something down to Higher Tech Circle. The Death Marks were a choice that you never really wanted to take a bunch of before because you'd rather just have Immortals running around doing the thing. But the new Death Marked ability is pretty cool. After your Death Mark fires, you get to add Seek to your opponents, which... It's kind of gross, right, Jason? That's pretty insanely strong, especially because death marks have the capability to ignore obscuring. So honestly, like death marks just kind of like casting a wide net and then just having a shooting network of if I can see you, I can shoot you. It's just this like hide and seek nightmare trying to hide from death marks. And honestly, I'm a huge fan of that. Yeah, and death marks are the only ones that can use the death mark ability, so you cannot do it with immortals. Immortals also did get a little bit of a change, and they now count as three APL for control, but not quite as fun as something like the higher tech circle death marks. Anyways, let's get on to our top five for the edition, starting at number five. 
a little bit of a two two way uh, joiner because we're yeah, being kind, a little kind of cheating here. it just a touch because uh, commandos and scouts are so so similar. Um, like right off the bat, like they both have ten wounds. They are pretty similar. Scouts are a little bit better since they have four up armor instead of five up armor, and they hit on threes in their shooting instead of fours. But otherwise, they can both have like the same combat profile in melee. Um, and they are both a enormous source of strength for the melee of the teams. Um, like especially with scouts, if you don't take warriors, you don't really have great access to melee besides the one hunter and like your sergeant with the chainsaw. But you don't really want to have him just like running around willy-nilly and like a sergeant with a bolt gun is definitely something to consider as well. Um, so the warriors being able to flex into melee is enormous. Um, and then like the the commandos being able to flex into melee with the warriors is fantastic. Because like if you if you don't take a bunch of warriors, they're going to be a very shooty team. Yeah, because you're stuck at three attacks in melee now, which is a team wide basically like nerf. Where when you had three attacks and you get choppas, you no longer go to four attacks. So the boys are where you're getting your mass four attacks in melee, which is necessary in some matchups for especially when you want to two shot people. And then scout specialists, yeah. you know, the reason why at the end of the day, I think that both of us were giving it to the scouts in general in this matchup is that the specialists for the scouts, you actually don't care for some of them sometimes. Like sometimes you want to have a couple heavy gunners, but sometimes you don't, right? Yeah. Yeah, the mobility is important. Meanwhile, when it comes to the commandos, you might skip out on a handful of gunners to take up some boys, but generally those specialists are going to be worth their weight in the matchups where you want them, which is most of them. Yeah, it, it's not like a horrible choice to, I mean, like if someone was going to run just a bunch of boys as commandos, I think they would have a pretty good time and not do horribly. Like you could probably do, you could probably surprise people at events with that being a surprisingly valid way to play. And I guess it would be remiss if we didn't actually say what the ability was. And it's that once a turn across your warriors, you can chuck a stun or a smoke grenade for free that comes out of an extra inventory. So you don't actually have to take smokes and stuns if you take the warriors for either of these two teams. And it's like a stun and a smoke for free. So you yes. could like pop a smoke grenade somewhere, pop a stun grenade somewhere, next turn, like wherever you need it the most, throw another stun grenade. And uh, it's just impossible to hide from special grenades from either of these teams. Yeah, you can even have one dude with a comms buff move into position and chuck a stun and a smoke at two separate targets because those are different actions, which is fun. All right, number four. Blades of Cain. The official warrior spam team. They have no choice but to play warrior spam. That's always how it's been. Yes. And, you know... It's kind of fun for us to say <laughs> they are definitely the best Warriors. They didn't get any changes, and the team might actually be worse overall in this edition. But they are definitely big on their Warriors, and we're going to talk about some of their Mono Aspect strengths over, in, over the course of this chunk. You know, Mono Avengers, at the end of the edition, they had a little bit of play into something like Geller Pox, where you could take a bunch of torrent weapons and you could be just acceptable enough in melee where you're not going to die. And you could move around, shoot your tagger guys, and then run away from your opponents. And with all the torrent coming from all the angles, it was pretty hard for Geller Pox to not get chipped away at on activation advantage. Striking Scorpions... You could take Super Conceal, you know, hide anywhere on the map, and then as they get closer, you could jump out, spit with indirect, or run around people, chipping away at them, and then moving away from them, which is pretty fun because twice a turn, you can move with an engagement range and spit at people. Should be a little bit harder in this edition, especially with doors now costing you an inch of movement, right? Yeah. And then, of course, the one that Jason has gotten a little bit of use out of, Mono Banshees. Yeah, I mean, Banshees are just so good at, at hit and run, just like being being aggressive and cagey at the same time, where they'll just like strike you for less, but keep themselves safe throughout it. Um, and the, like every now and then, any single Banshee can just pop off and way overperform. And the fact that you, if you go mono Banshee, you've got seven of these warriors that all have the potential to just absolutely pop off makes them pretty scary. Yeah, the ability to have effectively team-wide fly or effectively the fallback when you crit someone and then run away is definitely really scary, and you can do it everywhere. So Blaze of Cain, definitely a fun one if you're thinking about taking a bunch of warriors, even if they haven't changed that much between the two editions. Warp Coven got a little bit of a glow-up as well. 
Rubric yeah, Marines. The fact that yeah, like all of Dust went away and is just baked into their profile, and so they've got a, a two up armor save. I mean, they were already amazing in the first place. They're instead of being capped at how fast they can move, now it's if you don't move, you get rerolls, which is just a straight up upgrade in every single way. And with um, our piercing equipment, bolters, you get a devastating bolters. One. Yeah, and that's not like the same way Intercessors used to have it, where you trade a crit damage for it. You maintain your crit damage, and you gain Devastating 1. Yeah. The other equipment you can take is Gargoyle Bayonets, or whatever the equivalent is, and it gives you an extra attack in melee. And if you get Charge, you get Accurate 1, which means that it's generally going to be pretty hard for any sort of threat to really have a one one round of combat to get rid of you. So it's going to take them a couple more rounds of combat, which is really rough, especially when... If you're already in a good firing position and you can win the fight, you can execute someone, and then if you're standing on the advantage still, just double tap away. And part of the reason why we put them here compared to their gunners is because gunners in Warp Coven actually cost three action points to double shoot. So if you're willing to give up a little bit of firepower, you can just have a way more mobile threat with Ceaseless compared to the Soul Reaper Cannon or the Warp Flamer, which requires you to stand in place and shoot twice. And not only that, the just like the Inferno bolt guns in the first place are just straight up better guns than like almost everything else in the game. Like they're insanely good. They're not to be taken lightly. Yeah, four on threes with ceaseless shooting twice if you're already in an overwatch position with three, four dev one damage and piercing one. It's going to crack pretty much anything and put damage down range on to literally everything. And then we've got Jason's big favorites, the Phobos Strike Team, coming in second. A lot of Marines out here. The age of the elites really is here. Yeah, Phobos, my babies. I mean, I've already been running Warriors a bunch just because a lot of the special abilities are kind of just clutter. And now that you get something in return for that clutter, which is the Vanguard ability baked into their data sheets to do mission actions for free, it's just, I mean, like, mostly what you want to do is just move, kill, and score. And doing Vanguard it just makes them insanely good at that. So just declutter your life and run a bunch of Phobos Warriors with Vanguard. Steal points from people, especially with the Reavers and their and their terror. Their terror abilities, you can just like steal an objective from somebody and double fight or like double shoot and like charge and take an objective is just like insanely efficient. Um yeah, just the specialists are, are kind of just like they're they're a lot better now than they were, but they still kind of feel like clutter compared to with how just crazy efficient these Vanguard warriors are. Ooh. And we've got Legionary as our number one pick. And what makes the Legionary Warrior so good? Well, their ability to take any chaos mark when you activate any given warrior is does seem kind of crazy, right? You wanna walk us through some of the use cases, Jason? They are just like full blown jumped up to the same stat line as Intercession. Um, so they've got 14 wounds now. The Astartes keyword lets them shoot and uh, shoot or fight twice, which is just like insanely flexible. Um, one of the crazy combos that stands out right away is the Zinch Bolt Gun Warrior. Uh, you can gain just with one ploy, Fickle Fates gives you uh, what is it? It's punishing. So if you get, if you. Uh, if you get a crit, one of your fails becomes a normal hit, but then your ability as a Zinch Warrior is severe in the first place. Basically, if you don't get a crit, you get a crit now, and then that just stacks and goes crazy. Um, you've, get, you've got equipment, which is once per turning point, a single shot becomes rending, which is just another crazy thing to stack onto that combo to have just insanely good shooting. Um, yeah, and the fact that when you activate them, you choose which mark of chaos they are, you can just, like, flip to corn, and now your five attacks in melee getting plus one damage becomes a full-blown chainsword. So now you just have, like, one of the stronger bolt guns in the game, as well as just a full-blown chainsword profile. Um, stacks really well with the Quicksilver reflexes, so that your enemies fight as though they're injured. Just messes up the math. Like, it's like, they're not even a designated melee operative, and they are better at melee than... Most people's designated melee operatives, and then the same goes with the shooting, and they can just flex between the two, and it just seems insanely, insanely strong. Yeah, it just seems insanely flexible. So while it might not be as strong as a Butcher or an Anointed or any of the individual specialists, having a couple Warriors floating around 
really lets you push your opponent into these weird spots where they think they have to deal with a Zinch spam or a Nurgle spam who can resist piercing. And then as they get a little bit closer, as you creep a little bit closer, you can switch gears into a faster Slanesh charge or more dangerous Corn Operative. Or if your opponent tries to charge you to tie up your you know, your legionary warrior, suddenly he becomes a corn dude. His combat knife instantly does seven damage and he just pulls out pulls out whatever he wants and starts gunning people down. Which means that this is just like a very powerful operative that can do anything. And that's why we have the legionary warrior as our best piece of warrior spam. Yeah, it's another one of those instances of it is a 100% valid and even like advisable to bring not just one warrior but like bring three warriors they're amazing yeah i think there is some play in having good aggressive positions backed up by maybe the nurgle ploy so you get into like an early shooting position bust out the engage force people to interact with you early while you're piercing one stalls your stalls your opponent out and you can send your melee operatives to creep while your nurgle warriors sit on tops of vantage and screw your opponent over and then switch over to zinch you know, on the next turn, and now suddenly those guys are in these positions, they've tanked out a little bit of damage, and they can start raining down hell on your opponent. So much flexibility. Yeah, they're super interesting, and probably one of the most interesting warriors of the edition, so we'll see. And if anybody gives them a try this edition, let us know how it goes. At any rate, that was, uh, that's all we got for this little piece of Just Another Kill Team podcast top five list. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in and see you next time. Thanks. For